Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software and be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast. In particular, I want to highlight the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. If you love old time radio and you're curious about the breadth of stuff out there, including some stuff that's only recently come into circulation, you want to check out the Old Time Radio Snack Wagon. Every Monday, we post a new Old Time Radio Snack, which generally ranges somewhere between 4 and 20 minutes. That's kind of pushing it, plus my commentary. And episodes come from a wide variety of different genres. We played rare music programs, excerpts from comedy programs, and recently we just posted an episode of The Adventures of Lassie. And there's stories about history and so much more. You can check it out at snackwagon.net and you'll also get a sample of it as we'll be serving up old time radio snacks from our first season as part of our old time radio snack wagon smorgasbord this Sunday. And you can always check out the podcast at snackwagon.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Bulldog Drummond. And unfortunately, this is one of the rougher quality episodes, but... It's still listenable. The original air date, April 28th, 1948, and the title is Murder Has an Open Mind. Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures come Bulldog Drummond. It was a typical bright spring morning. I was out for a canter in the park. As my horse jogged along the elm-lined bridle path, I remember thinking to myself that nothing could possibly mar the peace of this morning. It was a comforting thought, but as usual, short-lived. Help! Stop it, please! Help! Stop it! Help! She passed by in a cloud of dust. Quickly, I spurred my mount into a gallop and started after her. As we sped around the bend in the path, I pulled up alongside the runaway horse, reached out, and grabbed the reins. Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa! The champing animal balked for a while, and then gave in and came to a stop. I dismounted. Her body lay limp in the saddle. I lifted her down carefully. As I carried her across the bridle path toward the green, I looked down at her. Her fine-featured, pallid face was set in a frame of honey-colored hair. That prince charming to the rescue feeling came over me. And then the sleeping beauty in my arms broke the spell. You can put me down now. Oh, uh, what's that? Put me down, please. Oh, you're, you're sure you're all right? I'm all right. Very well. There you are. Thank you. Might I suggest that the next time you go for a ride, you pick a less spirited horse? This animal in you don't appear to see eye to eye. Oh, Raven is all right. 
Well, does he usually take you for such an exciting run? I had him under control all the time. Frankly, it didn't look that way. It was an act. The whole thing was an act. Really? I wanted to get your attention. Well, you certainly did. But why am I? Well, you're Captain Hugh Drummond, aren't you? Oh, what's that? I found out from one of the stable hands that you ride here on Saturday morning. Captain Drummond, I had to speak to you. I, uh, I admit the telephone is a far less dramatic means than the one you employ. This but... is no joking matter. I need your help desperately. You don't look very desperate. You don't understand. Yes, yes that young lady is a gross undertaker. This is for us to speak to alone, so no one would find out. I thought this would be the best way. At any rate, it's novel. Well, we're alone. What do you want to speak to me about? Um... Hey, don't ask me my name. Oh, one of those things. I'll tell you everything else to you do what I ask. I'll get in touch with you and I'll tell you where to go to me. In what? The package they're going to pick up for and what makes you think I'm going to pick up a package for you? Oh, you've got to. You've just got to. Uh, I, I can do anything. Not in this game for money, or haven't you heard? Well, then do it because I need you to. Everything is at stake. You can trust me, believe me, you can. Captain Drummond, will, will you help me? You're very pretty. Mystery becomes your type. Will you? I'll think about it. But there isn't much time. You've got to be there by two this afternoon. Where? For the Kramer Museum. It's the Penny Arcade on 42nd Street. There's a side show downstairs. Uh, yes, I know about Kramer. So you have to be downstairs by two. There's a woman by the name of Zara. She has to collect the collector's letter. Zara will speak to you. And I take it this Zara person will tell me what's on my mind. You'll write the initials A on one of the cards they pass out to the crowd. Zara will tell you the initials stand for Los Angeles. That would be the signal for you two to get together. I mean, Zara would give you two directions. Is that clear? About as clear as finer points in the relativity theory. Yes, you get the package. When I get in touch with you, you explain everything. Then you forget. You write the initials L.A. on the card that they give you. And oh. that's... Oh, 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 no, don't mention a word, I told you. Oh. Uh, who is he? Oh, please don't say a word. You mustn't tell him anything. Hello. What are you doing here? Oh, Albert. Albert, I went for a ride. You were told not to. It was forbidden. You were told not to leave your room under any circumstances. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Albert. I just had to get out. I just Who is had this to man? leave. Oh, well, he, he was helping me. What do you mean, helping you? The young lady's horse was out of control. Yes, Raven. Something was wrong with him, Albert. I managed to stop him. The gentleman was very kind. I see. All right, Carol. Get back on, Raven. We're going home. Yes. Yes, Albert. Now, if there's any way I can repay you for your help... Uh, not at all. Glad to be of assistance. Well, thank you. Raven knows what would have happened to Carol if I hadn't found her this quickly. You've uh, probably noticed that my wife talked peculiarly. Your wife? Yes. She's under a doctor's care. Carol seems to imagine things. It was induced by a shock. The doctor says with a proper rest and treatment, she'll be all right in time. I phoned Denny and had him meet me at Kramer's Museum. The street floor of the museum was the usual penny arcade with the usual variety of coin machines that ranged from hand grip testers to one-minute views of flickering Max Sennett bathing suits. In the rear of the arcade was the usual shooting gallery. And Denny, as usual, was concerned. Really, Captain Drummond, sometimes I don't understand you at all. What is it this time, Denny? Why do we bother coming here to this place? You told me yourself that the woman's husband said she wasn't just right. So he did. And that fantastic story she told you about getting information here about a package. What package? She didn't say. Ah, you see, that's just what I mean. It doesn't make any sense, not a bit. But that sign over there does. Hmm? That placard to your right. See, Zara, the mental marvel in the Hall of Wonders downstairs. Next performance at 2 p.m. Zara. Well, 
You see, Denny, there might be some sense to this excursion of ours after all. Well, that still doesn't prove anything, sir. No, but just the same, I'm anxious to see if Zara and I have some thoughts in common. Come along, we'll go downstairs. Very well, sir. Hey, uh, mister, hold on a second. Uh, yes? Yeah, he's dropped this envelope. Oh, but, uh... Gotta I... be more careful. I, I say, wait, uh, just a moment. Oh, he uh, disappeared into the crowd, sir. Yes. And this envelope isn't mine. Oh, but you see, so definite that it belonged to you. Well, what is it, sir? No wonder he was so definite. Hmm? This note in the envelope is addressed to me. Really? What does it say? Drummond, stay out of this. Mind your own business. Otherwise, you get what's in this envelope. But uh, what's in the envelope, sir? Well, that, Denny, I take it as a reference to this little item enclosed with a note. Here, look at it. Wait. Captain Drummond, that... That's a bullet. And now, ladies and gentlemen... But then it's for your amazement, our next attraction on the platform to my right, Kim Chan, the Oriental juggler. Man of a thousand tricks, ran by audiences to us the world. I suppose it was a matter of amateur detectives walking in where professionals fear to tread. Despite the warning note in its accompanying cartridge, Jenny and I went downstairs to the Kramer's Museum Hall of Wonders. It was a dingy, smoke-filled room with a series of shoddy platforms placed about. We waited impatiently as the listless barker conducted the onlookers from one dull attraction to another. And then at last, we moved with the crowd to the front of the platform where the silver letters on the black curtain spelled out Zara, the mental marvel. Zara. Zara, ladies and gentlemen. The wonder woman who reads your mind, the little lady who knows your every thought. I see the gentleman's collected the cards upon which you've written your questions. Now, Zara, the mental marvel who has stunned you with her ability to delve into the researches. Uh, if she were able to delve into mine, sir, she'd I know that I'd prefer to be here. safe and sound at home. Oh, I am oh, a oh, quiet. Near upon which has been the initials L.A. Oh, that's your, sir. The person who wrote these initials wishes me to answer a question in relation to a city. Will the person who wrote the initials speak up, please? I wrote the initials. Thank you, sir. Am I correct? Uh, so far. Gentleman wishes some information about the city of Los Angeles. Am I right, sir? You're quite right. Oh, oh, Gentleman but... desires to know if the trip he plans will meet with success. Will he find what he seeks? Well, will I? I can only see that the gentleman is headed in the right direction. The rest is not clear yet. Gentlemen will remain for a moment after my performance. I shall be happy to discuss the matter with him. Very well, I'll wait. Thank you, sir. Now I have a card here upon which is written the question, Where will I find... Now, Zara, uh, don't try to move. You'll be at the hospital in a few moments. Oh, I hear you, but the doctor's dead. Not a chance I heard him. I've got to tell you this. I saw him in the crowd. It was Ace. He did this to me. <laughs> it's rotten of him to do a thing like this to me. I was only trying to help her, that's all. Ace isn't the kind to help anybody. We'll find him, I promise you. You'll pay. Yeah, sure. How about the package? You'll get it to him, won't you? Where is it? In my room. Hotel Maxton. It's... Oh, it's... 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 Jenny? Yes, sir? Tell the driver, never mind the hospital. Tell him to head for the morgue. Turn in a moment to continue our story. After I explained my part in the matter to homicide, Denny and I went to the murdered woman's room at the Hotel Maxton. We hurriedly looked through Zara's effects for the mysterious package. 
nothing of importance in this closet, Captain Drummond. All right, try the bed. It may be hidden in the mattress. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Denny. You, you found it, sir? No. This newspaper clipping. Look at the picture above the story. Why, that's Zola. Yes, but just now it's the man in the photo I'm interested in. It does look somewhat familiar, but I just can't place it. I can, Denny. In Kramer's museum, the Penny Arcade. Why, of course, sir. He's the man who handed you the envelope. That's right. Clipping is from a Chicago paper dated June 2nd, 1937. Listen to uh, what the caption on the photograph has to say. Shown above are Ace Collins and his wife, Rita, who were sentenced yesterday to a five-year term for a $15,000 jewel theft. Also sentenced, but to a lesser term, was Anne Vincent, sister of Mrs. Collins. What? Zara? She said Ace. She said she saw him fire the shot. It was her own husband who killed her. Yes, Jenny. But why? Evidently because he knew she was about to turn over the package to us. Oh, but what could be in the package, sir? Now, the rest of this newspaper story makes that rather obvious. According to the account, Rita Collins, or Zara as we knew her, worked a fortune-telling racket in Chicago for the sole purpose of obtaining information from unsuspecting clients. Information regarding the location of valuables. And that simplified Ace's second story work. Precisely. Ah, then the package in question must contain valuable jewels. Undoubtedly, Denny. Ace and Zara were back in business at the old stand. Now, let's get back to our search. Try the bed, as I told you. Yes, sir. In the meantime, I'm going to finish looking through this chest. You still look at the something? Oh, sure. Okay. Keep looking. Well, if there's 45, I'm holding on. How, how did he get in here, sir? Maybe I should have not. Yes, I believe Emily Post lists that as the acceptable manner of entrance. What are you doing? In? Believe it or not, we're the new porter. Just tidying up the place a bit. So you're a funny man. It helps to make these trying situations more passable. Well, look, funny man. Maybe this will make you laugh on the other side of your face. You and that character there are headed for a fast trip to police headquarters. Oh, headquarters. <laughs> he said headquarters, sir. You heard it straight. The dame that lived here was knocked off this afternoon. Well, no one knows that better than we do. Hmm? This guy's even dumber than he looks. Come on, you two. Let's go. Oh, no, you don't understand. You heard me start smart. Uh, but wait a minute. Now, look, I don't want any trouble from but, you. Uh, what you... Denny is trying to say is that we just came from police headquarters. Hmm? Christ, Christ. And for your information, this gentleman is Captain Hugh Drummond. What? Drummond. Captain Hugh Drummond. Drummond? Well, why didn't you say so? That gun you're holding didn't exactly invite a deduction. Oh, right. I guess I'd better put it away, huh? Any objection, Denny? Uh, not the slightest, sir. Now, my name's Braden Drummond, Carl Braden. I guess you're kind of wondering what I'm doing here, huh? Kind of. Sure. Oh, I guess I can't blame you. Uh, I'm with the Acme Insurance Company, special investigator for the claims division. I've been trying to track down a diamond necklace that was stolen a couple of weeks ago. Acme stands to lose 20000 if I don't round up that ice. I had my eye on that Zara thing. Well, Denny and I have covered every inch of this room. No luck, huh? None so far. Well, I guess it looks like Acme is going to have to pay that 20000 to Albert Stevens' wife. Albert. That's right, Albert Stevens. And Mrs. Stevens' name is Carol. Yeah, Carol. A lot of help that same has been to me. After the ice was reported missing, Mrs. Stevens goes into a mental tailspin. Nothing she says makes sense. Captain Drummond, Mrs. Stevens must be that lady who met in the park this morning. Uh, Denny, you stay here with Brayton. I suggest you two give this room another going over. Maybe we miss a spot or two. In the meanwhile, I'm going to see a woman... Sorry, I'm late, Captain Drummond. But I may be here without you to see you now. Where's your husband now? Oh, uh, he's in the library. Very well, get in, Mr. Stevens. We're going to have that talk I mentioned. But there's nothing to talk about, Captain Drummond. Would you rather I discuss the matter in Mr. Stevens' presence? Uh, oh, oh, well, all right. Please, I, I can't stay long. If Albert finds out that I'll I left the I'll be as brief as possible, Mr. Stevens. 
I want the truth, all of it, unvarnished. Uh, what do you mean? Why did you want me to pick up that package? And what was in it? Package? Package? I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know very well what I'm talking about. What was in that package? And what is the connection between you and Zara? Zara? I don't know anyone named Zara. Uh, see here, Miss Stevens. A $20,000 necklace was stolen. Your necklace. You were trying to get it back. Zara was probably selling it back to you. No. You didn't want your husband to find out about it. Why, I don't know. You selected me as your go-between. I was to get it from Zara, then bring it to you when no questions asked. Isn't that it, Mrs. Stevens? Isn't it? No. No, I, I don't understand what you're talking about, no. Well, you'd better understand, Mrs. Stevens. The matter's gone further than mere robbery, much further. There's been a murder. Murder? Yes. Zara is dead. Zara? She was murdered this afternoon by her husband, Ace Collins. No. Oh. I was with her when it happened. No, she couldn't be. Zara's not dead. She couldn't be dead. You seem concerned, Mrs. Captain Drummond, I'll talk. I'll tell you everything. Why this sudden change? What? Sarah was my sister. That's why, right, Captain Drummond. She was my sister. No. And this is Mrs. Stevens' story as she told to me, Denny. She was implicated in the Chicago robbery ten years ago with her sister and Ace Collins. Carol proved that she was used as an innocent foil, and the court let her off with a light sentence. Then she came east, changed her name, and married Albert Keith. Yes, but what about her stolen necklace? Yes, I was just coming to that. Evidently, Ace Collins found out where Carol had turned up here. He pulled the robbery. Carol feigned illness so she wouldn't be asked questions. Questions that might lead to her real identity and the ruination of her man. I see. And when her sister Zara found out that Ace had stolen the necklace, she made an effort to get it back to Carol. That's about it, Denny. But Zara was murdered by Ace for her attempt to help Carol. I'll get it. Hello? Captain Drummond? Yes? This is Albert Stevens. Oh? Carol has told me everything about what she was, about the necklace, about you, everything. I'm glad she did. I told her it would be much better that way. I knew you'd understand. Uh, may I speak with her, please? What? Uh, may I speak with Carol? What makes you think your wife is here, Mr. Stevens? Well, there was a phone call about an hour ago. She said it was you. She told me you wanted to see her. I didn't call your wife, Mr. Stevens. But, uh, wait, Captain. What is it? There's a note here on the pad next to the phone. It's Carol's handwriting. What does it say? Uh, here, 37 midnight. Dear 37. I'd better get down there right away, Carol. Maybe in trouble. No, no, Mr. Stevens. You stay at home. I'll go down there and handle matters. I'll call you. Keep walking. What? So like I tell you, Drummond, just keep walking to the river. The voice sounds familiar. How does the face look? Familiar? Ace Collins. You're kind of stupid, Drummond. You should have laid off like I told you in my notes. Oh, yes, yes, I recall. There was a cartridge enclosed. Yeah, but now the shell ain't in an envelope. It's in this gun. Where's Mrs. Stevens? In the river where you're going. She had a big mouth like her sister. I closed them both up for good. Now it's your turn. All right, hold it. Take a look down there at the water, Drummond. That's what you're going to take a dive at. And you're going to sink fast because I'm going to load you down with a back full of lead. So long, copper. Now you take that dive. Both just came in, Denny, and they found Mrs. Stevens' body under the pier. Oh, horrible, sir. And just think, you might have been at the bottom of the river, too, if not for a stroke of sheer luck. Well, Brayton's entrance on the scene was not luck, Denny. It was nothing short of a miracle. Guess it was good that I got ace in time, huh? Uh, how did you ever in heaven's name happen to be down here at the waterfront? 
Like I told Drummond, I called to Stevens' house. Mr. Stevens said Drummond was down here hunting for his wife. So I came on down to lend a hand. Just when I get here, I see Ace and Drummond over near the edge of the pier. I see Ace's gun flash in the moonlight. I figured what was up. So I let Ace have it and goes into the room. Well, Brayton, as they say, one good turn deserves another. I'm uh, going to repay you for what you've done. Jenny. Yes, sir. Did you bring it with you? I did, Captain Drummond. Thank you. Show it to Brayton. It's the necklace. The Stevens necklace. That's right. Where did you find it? In Zara's room at the Hotel Maxton. What? Well, but you said it wasn't there. You said you covered every inch of the room. I found it in the drawer just as you walked in. I managed to slip it inside my coat before I turned around. At that time, I wasn't taking any chances. I wasn't trusting anyone. You couldn't blame me, could you? Well, yes, I couldn't. But uh, you certainly proved yourself great. No doubt in my mind now where you stand. Well, I suppose that about winds the matter up. Yeah, I guess it does that, Truman. Except, of course, for a few minor details. How do you mean? Brayton, I was on to you quite a way back. What are you talking about? Murders. Three of them. The two you had Ace Collins commit, Zara's and her sisters, Carol Stevens, and the one you yourself committed tonight, the killing of Ace Collins. What's the matter with you, Drummond? Where do you get that stuff from? You crazy? I saved your life. Ace was going to kill you. I got him in time. You saw it yourself. You'd be a dead duck if it wasn't for me. Now you talk like that. Saving me, Brayton, was part of a scheme to do away legally with your trigger man. I admit it looked good. Extremely good. Look, Drummond, will you cut this gag guard? A joke's a joke. You placed the suspicion squarely on yourself when we first met in Zara's room. At that time, you mentioned Zara's murder. It was rather unusual that you should have been aware of that fact, seeing that I'd reported to homicide only about 20 minutes previously. Uh, what about the wire from Chicago in reply to your inquiry, sir? Oh, yes, Denny, thank you. Another incriminating detail, Brayton. Ten years ago, you were on another stolen jewel case. You recovered the jewels through an underworld contact. Your company was quite willing to pay the $5,000 to get the gems back by that method rather than run the risk of paying the full insured value. Unfortunately, that case backfired, and Collins and his wife were picked up by the police later. It must have cost you a good deal to keep them quiet. No comment from Braden, sir. I take it you were accurate in every detail. Is that all, Captain Drummond? Just about, Denny. Uh, except for one thing. What's that, sir? Well, Denny, it doesn't take a mental marvel to grasp the unhappy thoughts which now lie heavy in the recesses of Brayden's inner mind. Just a moment to tell you about next week's story. A painting of an unusually beautiful woman attracts my attention and subsequently leads me along a path where murder and violence prove to be the milestone. At the end of the trail, I learn that artwork has a surprising touch when death paints the portrait. Be sure to listen, won't you? Welcome back. Despite the sound quality, it was a solid enough episode with enough suspects and twists to really keep you guessing and engaged. 
I will say that the ambulance driver would probably have insisted on going to the hospital despite Captain Drummond's request. Though I don't know, he does seem to have the run of New York City. Well, listener comments and feedback now, and we go to our listener survey. And Russ writes in, I listen to this podcast almost exclusively. It makes my trip to and from work much less monotonous and gets me through the more tedious aspects of my workday. I've made it to early 2023 and hope to get fully caught up in the next few months. You guys are simply the best. Thank you for making your hard work available to us. Well, thank you so much for listening, Russ, and I hope you enjoy hearing this read out when you get caught up with us, maybe in January, February, something like that. All right, well, now it is time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Jesse. Jesse's been one of our Patreon supporters since June 2016, currently supporting the podcast at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Jesse. And that will actually do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of Bulldog Drumming, but join us back here tomorrow. Tomorrow for Broadway's My Beat, where... Is he? One of your patients? Innocent. Innocent. You can talk plainer than that. Uh, I don't think I can. Uh, you tell him about it, Horace. Sure, physician. It was like this, chum. We found this man on our doorstep. He was... One uh... of the lost people? <laughs> You're quick, chum. No. This one was bleeding from a knife wound, but lots of blood. Stabbed. So I lifted him in my arms like he was a foundling babe, and I brought him here to the physician. We gave him a transfusion. Yeah, it Only thing I could do. He'd lost too much blood already. He was dying. Uh, I haven't practiced surgery for many years, Mr. Uh, Clover, but I think my old professors would have been proud of me. Who was he? That's your problem, chum. There was no identification on him. Not a thing. This one was uh, one of the anonymous. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.